Hi, and welcome to this Glowforge tutorial. In this quick tutorial, I am going to explain how to upload your projects to the Glowforge, how to adjust the different settings for the Glowforge, and how to operate the Glowforge. Let's get started. First, go to the website app.glowforge.com. You can access this website using all computers in the lab, using Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge. Once we are there, there are a bunch of different artworks you can choose from. These are artworks from other people that used the Glowforge previously. For now, we're going to use a new artwork. Click on the Create button. After that, choose Upload from File. A window will pop up where you can choose your file. Glowforge uses .svg files. You can create these SVG files using a program like Inkscape or Illustrator. The Glowforge app will now open and show you the file that you uploaded. This file is still grey and in the middle of your screen. You can drag this file around, but for now, just leave it. The artwork that I chose is a delft flame surrounded by a little square. What we want to do is we want to engrave the flame and cut the square. As you can see, Glowforge already separated those two images, the flame and the square. This is useful because now we can choose to engrave the flame. These images are separated because I use different colors for both images. In my artwork that I uploaded, the flame is red and the square is gray. So now Glowforge knows which drawings are separate. There are different options you can choose. You can choose engrave, cut, score or ignore. For now, for the flame, we're gonna choose engrave. The custom settings you can see are settings either used by other people or standard settings by Glowforge. For now, we're not gonna use those, we're gonna use our own settings. Scroll all the way down and go to manual. I've tested these settings before. The higher the speed, the higher the laser head moves. For now, we're gonna use 500. The higher the precision power, the stronger the laser is. For now, we're gonna use 30. The more lines per centimeter the engraving has, the more accurate the engraving is. However, the Glowforge will also take longer before finishing. For now, we're gonna use 75 lines per centimeter. We want to cut the square. For that, we choose cut and we scroll all the way down to manual to choose our own cut settings. I have again tested these settings beforehand. For speed, I use 200. For precision power, I use full power. To save these settings, don't press back. If you press back, the settings will not be saved and you have to enter them again. To save the settings, press outside of this area. This means just in the black area that you see on the screen. The settings are now saved. There's one last setting that needs to be done. That is the thickness of the wood. Press in the left upper corner on unknown. Don't choose any of these woods, but choose use uncertified material and enter the thickness of your material, in my case, two millimeters. It is now time to plug in the Glowforge and the filter. Use the small key that is included on the keychain. First, unlock the lock on the green casing. After that, open up the case and get out the cables. You can put the case on the side for now. Plug in the cables both of the Glowforge and of the filter connected to the Glowforge. This is the filter and that's the cable. Do the same for the Glowforge. To 
turn on the Glowforge using the button on the back. The Glowforge will now start calibrating. This can take up to a few minutes. On the screen in the Glowforge app you can see different words like homing and centering. Just let it do its job and it will finish automatically. Use a small white stripe on the filter knob to determine the filter strength. If you are not certain what setting to choose, set the filter strength to full. Finally, turn on the filter using the knob on the other side of the filter. To insert material in the Glowforge, carefully open the lid. After that, grab the material, put it in the middle of the Glowforge and close the lid carefully. Make sure that the material is aligned with the straight lines of the outside of the Glowforge. We can now position our artwork in the software. First, make sure that the Glowforge says ready in the top right corner. You can see that the camera of the Glowforge has scanned the wood and uploaded the picture to the Glowforge app. You can now position the artwork. Make sure that the artwork is at least a centimeter away from the edges as the camera has a slight offset. If you're happy with the position of your artwork, you can press print in the upper right corner. The print will now start preparing. If the Glowforge is done preparing the print, it will actually show the time it takes to finish the print. This time is quite accurate. If the big button on top of the Glowforge is slowly blinking, it means the Glowforge is ready to print. Press the button to start the print. If the Glowforge is done printing, make sure the glowing button on the top is not glowing anymore. As soon as it stops glowing, you can open the lid. Careful taking out the material, as it might be pretty hot due to the laser. If everything went well and the settings were right, you are the proud owner of your very own laser printed Glowforge project. If it didn't turn out as expected, just try again, play with the settings and see if you can find the perfect settings for your project. If you're finished with the Glowforge, make sure to take out your material and close the lid carefully. If the Glowforge is very dirty, we kindly ask to clean the Glowforge quickly. Furthermore, don't forget to turn off the Glowforge Turn off the filter and store away the cables again. And lastly, make sure to lock the green box and hand in the key if you have to. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful for getting started with the Glowforge. Good luck with your next project and thanks for watching.